Hi everyone, welcome to our weekly training video. This week we're talking about stairs, fear of stairs. Last week I talked a little bit about sort of options around uh, working with stairs. If you've got a dog who's afraid of stairs, you know you can avoid them, you can carry your dog. Um, and one option was training, training your dog to go up and down stairs. This is a pretty common fear that uh, we get asked about, so I wanted to talk a little bit about how to set up a training plan to help your dog be more comfortable going up and down stairs. And then I'll show you a little bit of um, Pancake's training process because he was also afraid of stairs um, when we first got him. So training for dogs afraid of stairs. This is for you if your dog is afraid of going up or down stairs, some stairs or all stairs. Um, and you can't avoid this. Your dog can't avoid stairs, you can't carry them, and a ramp is not an option. So a ramp is one um, workaround I discussed last week. So if you're thinking about training your dog to go up and down stairs, what are some things to include in your training plan? Well, it really depends on what makes any particular sort of set of stairs or flight of stairs uh, harder or easier for your dog. But some common ones, and ones that I've noticed with, uh, with Pancake and with some client dogs, include number of stairs. So is it a real short flight of stairs or a long one? How steep is the, are the stairs? What's the height, width, and depth of each stair? So usually really tall and narrow stairs are harder for dogs than big, broad stairs. The type of stairs, and by this I really mean, you know, is it a straight staircase or is it curved? Um, is it the, are they the kind of stairs that have... Um, openings at the back so like in this photo here on the left you know in theory the dog could see down through the stairs which can be scary what is the surface of the stairs is it carpeted or wood or concrete uh, where are the stairs so in your house outdoors indoors at a new location and are you going up or down so for a lot of dogs one direction can be a little harder than the other okay so there there's so many variations on stairs training and without assessing your dog, I can't tell you what exactly will work for you. Um, but I thought I'd show you an example. I can't give you all of the steps we went through that would take a really long time, but I wanted to show you a little bit about what um, I did with Pancake to help him getting up, going up and down stairs that I needed him to use. So the goal was for Pancake to at least go up and down a relatively short flight of stairs on his own. And these are stairs in our garage. But when we started, when we first got Pancake, he would go up some, a couple stairs that were outdoors that um, these were stairs between his safe zone and his kind of potty area outside. Going up was no problem. He was a little bit nervous about going down the, those one to two stairs. Now, so what, what seemed to matter to Pancake when it came to stairs? Number of stairs mattered. Short flights were easier, more stairs, um, that was more scary. How tall were the stairs? So they're, if they were pretty tall, he had a harder time with them. And remember, he is a small dog and he only has one front leg, so <laughs> that can affect um, how he perceives height, I'm sure. How deep the stairs are, so like how much room did he have if he were standing on a single stair? How steep was the flight of stairs, steeper was harder, and then what's the surface? So anything that's a little bit slippery would, is harder for him. Okay, and then what? how did we progress through training? So this is a very abbreviated description of what we did. He started with going up and down just two to three stairs that were outdoors and were concrete. Um, and I did need to adjust the height of these stairs to make it less scary for him, so make them not quite as tall. And I'll show you, I have a graphic of that in a second, so you understand what we did. Then two to four other outdoor concrete stairs. Uh, we worked on some adjustable stairs indoors, and, and I'll show you that um, in photos and video, what that means. And then we worked on the stairs that were kind of like our goal in training, which are the garage stairs. Um, we did also do some work with long, a long flight of, actually a couple long flights of indoor stairs. I'm not going to go over that today. I actually decided that he, he's not, it's not very safe for him to be encouraged to do that. But um, we have done some work on long flights of stairs also. Okay, so I just want to show you pictures of some of the stairs we use. So you get an idea of how, for Pancake at least, we moved from what was easier for him to harder for him um, in terms of the stairs in question. And then I'll show you video. So of course I didn't have a photo of this. I looked everywhere. So I'll just have to describe it using my excellent clip art skills. 
So here's a pancake, or a dog, actually not pancake, you can see it has two front legs. But anyway, a dog standing at the top of two concrete stairs, and they're pretty tall. And what these were in our, at our house was uh, the steps going from sort of the dog door that he would use to go in and out down to where he would potty. Uh, so these were too tall, and so we had some extra paving stones lying around. So I stacked them as shown at, to turn the two steep steps into um, one, two, three less sort of tall steps, so shorter steps. And that made it um, possible for him to go up and down without too much trouble. During this time, I couldn't really work with him in close proximity. He wouldn't take food from me or let him, me touch him. So the reinforcer for this was um, food toys down in the potty area, which also had a large coat of concrete pad. And I was actually doing that to get him to wear his nails down a little bit. And also just, you know, the, the reinforcer of getting to his potty area, which uh, he wanted to do on his own, luckily. So I didn't have to be present to actively reinforce going down the stairs. Uh, second stairs we worked on, and these are ones I could now be close to him for, are this, um, these short concrete stairs outside our front door. And then we also worked on some stairs once he was out on walks. Um, there are some concrete stairs like this on a local college campus that we walk in sometimes. And so we practiced going up and down these just to have a larger number of stairs to practice with. We then worked on um, some adjustable stairs in the house. And I really liked these because the surface is really nice and rubbery and grippy. And I can adjust how, um, how tall the steps are. So this, in this photo, the, these stairs, which are, um, they're meant for, to help dogs load in and out of a car. So here I have them extended all the way, which means the steps are as sort of shallow as they can possibly go. And it goes all the way to, um, here, they're just about as tall as they'll go. So you can see you have a lot of uh, room for variation in there. And then um, the last stairs I'll talk about today are these garage stairs that I ideally wanted Pancake to go up and down when we're going to the car from the house. So these are, um, they're wood, they're a little bit slick, um, and you can see they're open. And he was pretty worried about these to start. He would not go. Um, down them. So what was the training process then? So I just showed you the stairs we used in training. How do we actually get him to go up and down these stairs? I used food, um, both as food lures, so visible food up front to encourage the behavior, and also food to reinforce the behavior after it happened. In some cases, I also was able to use sort of the destination as the reinforcer. So I talked about how Pancake wanted to go down that first set of stairs to get to his potty area. The same is true uh, when going down the steps outside our front door, when that leads to a walk. So that's um, what I mean by destination reinforcer. We often had to work in very tiny increments. So uh, forget going up fully up and down one step. Some, we had to start often with, um, can you put one paw down one step? We did need to work both directions kind of separately. If you think about it, going up steps and down steps are are sort of different behaviors, and we did need to, to work these separately. Um, and one thing I wanted to uh, point out, I, I don't have uh, footage coming up of a really long flight of stairs, but until your dog is going up and down the entire flight in each rep, you will need to teach your dog to go up and down within each rep without sort of getting to the end of the stairs and being able to turn around. So this next point is then um, becomes necessary sometimes. Uh, you'll notice that a, for a lot of you, your dogs may sort of go partway up or down a flight of stairs and then like they're not ready to do the full flight, but now they're, they feel stuck and they don't know how to get back the way they came. So that might be something you have to teach in order to make progress with um, stairs training. And maybe in a future session, if there's interest, I can talk more about teaching the dog to either back up or turn around um, to go back the way they came on stairs. And it did take us many sessions, as you can imagine, looking at all of the different stairs we worked with. Okay, so let's take a look at some video. So first of all, you always want to, you always want to start easy. So here's the first that, well, it's actually the second set of steps. First one I could work with him closely. And you can see we're just doing one step here. And I'm using food lures to get him come all the way up. And then I'll put a treat down one step. Um, 
And then later I put just food out and let him do it on his own if he wanted to. And you can see he developed a reasonable amount of um, comfort just going up and down those few steps. Then we, um, we also worked on the steps we could modify in the house. So here I'm using a food lure slash reinforcer to get him to go up and down this adjustable set of stairs. Here they're a little steeper than they were the first time. Uh, this, it took more, I did more than three sort of variations of steepness, but just to show you, there's the steepest one. And, and remember, you'll need small training steps. So here we are working on the garage stairs, which are the ones he was really afraid of, and we're just doing front paw down and then right back up to the landing to start, not even all his feet on the first step to start. I did use lids as treat targets um, in training sometimes, which I think were may have been helpful. I don't know if I needed them really. I talked about that a few weeks ago, but he sometimes has a hard time finding treats. So, and I, um, when I'm teaching him here, see, I was teaching him to back up and um, halfway down the stairs to come back. I found it was helpful to have these treat targets um, to get him to turn his body in a way that got him safely back up the stairs. And again, from the bottom, I was teaching, you know, top down and bottom up separately. And I would carry him down the stairs um, before he was ready. And here he's going all the way down the stairs. So I hope that gives you uh, a feeling for what our, um, some of our training looked like. Uh, so in summary, if you're going into the process of stairs training now, uh, make sure you start with by defining your goals. What um, what stairs do your dog absolutely have to go up and down? You know, what are their location? List all of them that you really need, including any attributes of the stairs that might matter to your dog. List all the things you think might matter to your dog about stairs, because you might need to vary those in training in order to make progress. <clears throat> make a list of all the different stairs you have to work with. For those of you whose dogs aren't really leaving the house much yet, um, that might be a pretty short list. Uh, you might want to invest in some of the adjustable stairs like I showed in the video that you can bring into the house. Um, but if you can leave the house, you probably um, there's probably quite a few different sets of stairs you could work on. And then as always, let your dog set the pace. Watch their body language, be conservative. If they're hesitant to follow a food lure, um, if they have fearful body language, back it up. Um, do something simpler, maybe a different set of stairs or modify the current stairs to make them uh, easier for your dog. Okay, everyone, I hope this um, gets you started on the right foot or paw as the case may be um, with stairs training. If you would like to stay in the loop and get all of our updates and weekly newsletter, um, go to the link at the bottom of the slide here, dogkindtraining.com newsletter. Um, and then you'll get updates from us whenever we have either new free content, new classes, um, discounts, deals, that kind of thing. All right, everybody, have a great week. I will see you after the holiday.